So if you've been following my channel for a while, I want to say a while, I've only been going just over three months, but yeah, um, you will know that I quite enjoy the trans world sports videos that look at different sports from around the world. Now today, we're going to look at the Winter Arctic Games. There's probably going to be some stuff here that is completely weird, but hope you enjoy. This is Greenland. Straddling the Arctic Circle, it's the world's largest island, covering an area more than four times the size of France. Greenland is a majestic remote place where temperatures can plummet to a savage minus 50 degrees Celsius. It's part of the Kingdom of Denmark and has a population of 55,000. It's not even about sport, but I didn't know it was a part of Denmark. You learn something new every day. But yeah, I think I prefer a warmer place to live, if I'm honest. The majority of whom live in the capital, Nook. On Transworld Sports visit to Nook, there were more people in town than usual, because, like us, they headed here for one of the biggest events in Greenland's history. The 2016 Arctic Winter Games. Dating back to 1970, the Games are held every two years and are a celebration of Arctic sports and culture. Right, before we get carry on with this video, can you think of any Arctic sports? Um, things like bobsleigh don't count as Arctic sports, do they? Is there like, is there like ice diving? If you've thought any of in that in this little weird break that I've just done, put it in the comments, because I can't think of any. Organizer of this year's event in Nook is Malina Abelson. Det er jo en del af vores kultur, the det her med, at vi har nogle arktiske sportsgrene, som går på tværs af Arktis. Så det er rigtig vigtigt, at vi mødes tværs af Arktis og fastholder den her kultur, fordi det er vigtigt for os, og fordi det er noget, vi har til fælles. Så det har stor kulturel betydning, det her også. Nine regions of the Arctic are represented at the Games. There are teams from Canada, the United States, Russia, Norway, Finland, Sweden, and of course Greenland. The Arctic sports and traditional Inuit Games are the undoubted highlight of the week-long event, which also features a number of other more mainstream sports. <laughs> The opening event is Sorry. the kneel jump, in Sorry, which competitors what? have three attempts to leap from a kneeling position to the furthest distance possible. So bear in mind, we did a little pause to try and think of Arctic sports. What is Arctic about kneel jumping? What do I even say? Like. What is Arctic about that? Overseeing proceedings is head official Sam Strange of Alaska. How strange. It's one of those games that takes a tremendous amount of core strength. Uh, a lot of core. As you see, they're kneeling down with their feet flat underneath them, and their bum has to stay seated on their heels throughout the whole attempt. They can swing their arms. Ideas then to thrust your body forward. The best way I can describe it is like Superman. Uh, kind of. Hang on. Not quite as easy as it looks. Sorry about that, I thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, quite tricky actually, especially when I got really bad ankles. Flat, lunging out, bringing both feet under them, landing on both feet at the same time and maintaining their balance. This is one of those games that takes a tremendous amount of cord to be able to do I still that. don't and know what is Arctic Even just to do it in general is a, a great feat. The skills displayed in many of the events date back thousands of years and were once necessary for the survival of those who lived in the Arctic. The kneel jump reflects the speed and balance needed whilst out on moving ice. A hunter kneeling down fishing through an ice hole would have to be agile and quick if the ice were to suddenly break underneath them. 
The new gun is sense. won by Greenland's Tony Fisker with a leap of one and a half meters. Tony is the world's leading Arctic sports athlete. Poster boy for the 2016 games. Altså, han er jo en fantastisk well, atlet, Tony Fisker, Fisker is men ikke nok, men han bare er en fantastisk atlet. Tony athlete. Fisker er også blevet vores ambassadør lige fra starten, too. fordi han er utrolig god ambassadors. til at lære andre netop om arktisk sport. Han er god til at fortælle, hvorfor har vi arktisk sport, hvordan kommer de her forskellige discipliner ud af, som er egentlig forberedelse til jagt ofte. Han har virkelig påtaget sig den her rolle med at videreføre det, fordi... They really needed to kind of lower the volume of her voice so you can hear the uh the english commentary over it Nothing was ever written down, so everything has to be passed on already. So apart from being great at the games themselves, he also plays a big part in ensuring their survival. Basically, if you couldn't work that one out, yes he's a great athlete, but he also is like the poster boy that's spreading the word. Personlighed. 27-year-old Tony hails from a remote community in the north of Greenland. He moved down to Nook to further his education, and it's where he lives today with his wife Tina and their two young children. Tony works as a pilot for Air Greenland, and because of his success at the Arctic Games over the years, he's become a well-known face in his homeland. I love competing at the games. I don't get quite as nervous anymore, maybe because I've learned to control my feelings more. I'm calm once the competition is underway, and I think that's a big reason why I seem to do well. To be at my best, I'm aware that I have to focus and stay relaxed. This was my problem when, um, so I used to do judo, used to compete, um, but I used to really suffer from the nerves. I, I didn't suffer from the nerves in team sports, in football, and, and even in bowls when I play as a team. Um, but I always felt the pressure on when I did judo because it's literally me against someone else. And quite often it's the same when I play lawn bowls um, on my own in, as a singles match because you are literally everyone is looking at you. The pressure is on you. You can't hide anywhere. So I think that's a really good point actually about how you can probably perform better if you haven't got those nerves. But people are different. People are different, aren't they? That some, no matter how long they're doing it, they will always, you know, get that stage fright. In the two foot high kick event, competitors have to hit the suspended target the with their feet. How together, are they getting their legs so high? Without losing their balance. When winds across the ice made vocal communication impossible, a hunter would signal to his village that he'd taken a kill by doing a two-foot hiking. That is impressive. Coming out on top in this competition is Alaska's Nick Hansen. He manages to achieve a height of 2 meters 43. How? That's eight foot. Although Nick emerges as winner, the 28-year-old is just as happy to see his fellow competitors do well. As a culture, we um, we encourage the strength of our competitors because if we're out hunting with them, we want them to be just as good as us, if not better. Inside. So um, that we can trust them, and that's kind of where it derives from. So if there's anything I can do to help or make someone better or help them get to their personal record, um, three of us all hit our personal records today. Um, and uh, if I can help make that happen, then I'm a happier guy. <laughs> good ethics, good ethics. And Across town, there's a good. lively atmosphere at the hand games competition. This is an activity of guessing and deceit, where members from one team try to guess which hand opposing players are hiding a small token in. It's one of the few games that doesn't have its origins in hunting or survival skills. It's always been played just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> How weird. Like, let them just sitting down, and then you've got them all jumping about, and. Yeah. Straight. All of these games are rooted in our culture. They give people an understanding of what life is like in the olden days when people would meet up and make social events out of playing these games. 
Inuit We're kind keeping that tradition alive here. You can find out how a hunter hones some of his skills. And we all swap the stories that we've been told by our elders when we meet up at the Arctic Games. We're going to be able to get the Arctic Games. We're going to be able to get the Arctic Games. We're going to be able to get the Arctic Games. The stick pull is a best of three event which tests a person's grip. The stick is covered in grease and the game is intended to teach the skills necessary to grab and hold on to a fish. Madness. Absolute madness. 18-year-old Curtis Willie from Arctic Bay in Canada proves to be the man to beat. Look <laughs> how happy he is. Sorry, what? Many of the games on display were designed to increase strength, improve endurance, and build up resistance. The person has got to hold their body straight, they have to hold their body flat. Realities of life that must be tough. The airplane does just that. It starts with the athlete lying face down on the floor. They then make their body firm and rigid and are carried for as long as possible. The attempt is over when the competitor can no longer hold their body rigid. That must be tough. It's like doing a plank, but in the air. The arm pull is one of the more conventional displays of strength on show and often provided entertainment whilst out on a hunt, which could last for days. The women's competition is won by Greenland's Nadja Olsen. <laughs> the sledge Holy. jump is a test of stamina and has its origins in the Siberian Arctic. Competitors must jump over the obstacles which are covered with a caribou hide. Whoever can make the most successful consecutive number of clearances is the winner. 17-year-old reindeer herder Sege Kudi comes from really the Yamal region of northern Russia. He puts on an incredible display and manages to clear 350 sledges. What? 350 sledges? That's insane. Just imagine going to the gym and, and doing that. Over, over the old um, the step thingy, whatever you call them. That's insane. I could probably do about 30 maybe, but 300 odd. Christ, that requires some serious stamina and fitness. For the locals here in Nuka, the most anticipated event comes towards the end of the games, and it's the head pull. <laughs> what the hell? What in the this hell? event, which builds up a tolerance for pain, the contest is complete when one of the competitors either pulls their opponent across the line, or if the band slips off their rival's head. People are loving it though, look at the crowd. In a head pull, you use a lot of back and neck strength. You also need to have a good technique. You need to maneuver yourself into a position where you don't slip. And you need to make sure your hair doesn't get in the way too. I became good at this event by constant practicing. You need to get a feel for the technique required. Just insane. In the final, Tony faces Drew Bell from the Canadian territory of Nunavut. Once again, it's the man from Greenland who's triumphant. For me, the games have been a lot of fun. The most important thing, though, has been seeing all my old friends from around the Arctic and making new friends, too. It does look like real fun. Like, you see all the people. I know it's only in, like, a sports hall, but the amount of people that are cheering you on, the great sportsmanship as well, it seems a lovely event to, homeland to homeland be a part of. It's been the best sporting experience of my life, and I'm really pleased with my performances here. Like that is the ridiculous. Arctic Winter Games preserve a heritage of endurance, initiative and cooperation. And it's clear that the people of the Arctic are not going to give up their traditions without a fight. Brilliant. Transworld Sports, although they could have uh, toned down the um, volume on uh, some of the people talking, such good, such good videos. Um, learning about other cultures and nations and their sports is brilliant it's it's brilliant um and it's just about being open-minded and ex wanting to explore um and that has been what i've been trying to do with this youtube channel especially i hope you enjoyed um if you did obviously like and subscribe and i will catch you next time